Hello everybody, this is Bob Kovacs here at Wirefly with a review of the brand new Samsung Stratosphere. Now, I say uh, brand new with a smile on my face because the Samsung Stratosphere is basically a Verizon version of the Samsung Epic 4G that came out for Sprint in July 2010. So this is a phone that first came out on Sprint about 15, 16 months ago. Now, does that mean it's a old, washed up, and no longer useful phone? Of course not. I think that the Samsung Epic 4G for Sprint is still one of the best sliding keyboard phones available today. Now, there are some other good sliding keyboard phones, the uh, Droid 2 Global and the Droid 3, both of which are on Verizon as well. Those are both good phones, especially the Droid 3, and uh, it, in fact, is a pretty good comparison against the Stratosphere because, as I said, this has a sliding keyboard. Not only does it have a sliding keyboard, it has a five row sliding keyboard with a dedicated row of numbers. And also, if you take a look at it, it has the Android menu buttons on either side of the keyboard. So these buttons up here are duplicated on either side of the keyboard, and that does help you navigate the screens and so forth. So uh, this is a very nice keyboard. I think it's one of the best keyboards available, and it's the same here on the Samsung Stratosphere for Verizon as it is on the Samsung Epic 4G for Sprint. Now let's go back and let's talk about some of the basics of the Samsung Stratosphere. Now this is one of Samsung's Galaxy S series of phones. It's not the Galaxy S2 that just came out, it's the original Galaxy S that was first released in the summer of 2010. It has a single core 1 gigahertz processor with 512 megabytes of RAM. It has a 4 inch diagonal Super AMOLED display with a resolution of 480 by 800 pixels. It's a beautiful display, one of the best displays available on any cell phone. It does have a front camera. This is a 1.3 megapixel front camera for video chat applications and a 5 megapixel rear camera with an LED flash. Now the uh, Stratosphere cannot do 720p HD video. It tops out at 480p video. Let's call that standard definition. Some might call it DVD quality video. And I do have a video clip I'm going to show you a little later on. Now this has Android 2.3.5, so it's a very current version of Android. It has four gigabytes of internal memory, and it does come out of the box with a four gigabyte micro SD card already installed. Let's take a little bit of a tour around the phone. This is the on off button, and it also puts the phone to sleep. Up on top, you have a standard 3.5 millimeter audio jack. On this side, you've got your volume up down rocker, and on the bottom, is a standard micro USB port for charging and for swapping files with your computer. Now uh, there's no button, no dedicated camera shutter button for the camera and there's uh, no other ports or jacks on this. Inside you have a 1800 milliamp hour battery. That's a pretty good sized battery. And we're going to talk a little bit more about what's inside because this is a 4G LTE phone. So this runs on Verizon's 4G LTE network. Now I don't have the Stratosphere activated, but it uh, does have a LTE SIM card inside of it. So I guess now comes the time that I need to show you that SIM card to explain uh, a little bit more about it. Okay, I'm going to turn the phone off because I want to pop the battery out and show you what is under the back cover here of the Samsung Stratosphere. The cover comes off pretty easily. Here's the battery. Now here is the SIM card. You, from your perspective, you probably think that looks just like any other SIM card, but this is what they call a micro SIM. Now this is an LTE SIM. LTE requires a SIM, but it does not work with SIMs from T-Mobile or with AT&T. Uh, even if the phone is unlocked, this is a uh, SIM that is required for LTE only. LTE is a completely different technology from the GSM that's used in T-Mobile and AT&T phones. Now, as I said, this is a micro SIM. This is what a full-size SIM looks like. So you can see that the micro SIM is much, much smaller. This full-size SIM will not fit into this slot. It has to be a micro SIM. You can see that not only is the full-size SIM taller, but it's also 
wider as well. So this does require only the micro SIM and it goes right here. Now while I have the back cover off, here is the micro SD card. Wow, it popped right out. It's a four gigabyte micro SD card. Let's put that back in. This is what the phone comes with, is a four gig micro SD card. And as for the battery, this is a 1800 milliamp hour battery, 1800 milliamp hours. Okay, that's a look at the SIM card and the battery inside the Stratosphere. And this really is a very nice phone. This is a 4G phone, as I said, and it will do very quick 4G speeds on Verizon's LTE network. Now, I have it internally on the Wi-Fi. You can just barely see I'm getting a little bit of reception on the Wi-Fi. I want to show you what a YouTube video looks like. I'm going to go ahead and search on a YouTube video. I shot a video on the 24 hours of Le Mans at Charlotte. Now it uh, looks like lemons. They pronounce it Le Mans. Uh, so it's the 24 hours of Le Mans at uh, Charlotte race, which happened a couple of weeks ago. My brother was one of the drivers. And here's a look at what that video looks like on one of the Samsung Super AMOLED displays. Turn it up just a little bit. and it's meant to be easy for people to enter and easy yeah that's for me to compete. And there are so this looks pretty darn good to me I can see it directly on the screen let me turn it down a little bit this is a very fun car race that uh, people take uh, or you know junkyard cars and fix them up and race them on the track and have a lot of fun with it so that is the 24 hours of Le Mans and this video looks absolutely gorgeous on the Samsung Stratosphere. That's one of the characteristics of the Super AMOLED display. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and stop this for now. There you go. So that's what a video looks like on the Samsung Stratosphere. Since I don't have it activated, I couldn't make a phone call, so I can't really talk about the phone call. But let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the camera. I've got the camera over here. It's a five megapixel camera, and uh, you can see a little bit about what it looks like there. You, uh, as I mentioned, it does have a front camera, and um, I'm going to go ahead and go through some of the pictures I took. Now, this is a picture I took for flesh tones, and I also took some pictures of a um, of a still life. There we go. There's my still life shots. I did the still life on my desk, and let's go ahead and take a look at a uh, up close shot of those. And as you can see that the contrast for the still life shots is not particularly good. However, the sharpness is really quite good. So uh, I was not so impressed with the contrast, but I'm quite impressed with the focus. Now let's go ahead and go in for the macro shot where I went in for a tight close up and take a look at the dime in particular. The date is easily readable and uh, nice and clear. The red, green, and blue for the pinheads is uh, pretty good. Again, a little washed out. The contrast is not so good. Look at the hair that I somehow captured between the green and the blue pinheads. Pretty nice. Then we're going to go to the flesh tone shot that I'd like to take. That's Luis on the left and Jen on the right. I thought that the contrast for this shot, now that used the flash on the camera, and their position may be like three and a half or four feet away from the lens. I thought that the contrast was pretty good, but it came out looking kind of green. And as happens quite often in my shots, it didn't quite focus on their faces. Notice that the coat rack behind Luis's face is actually sharper than his face is. Now when I took this shot, I didn't get boxes around their face. I took the shot using the automatic mode and it didn't seem to focus on their face and that's probably how most of you are going to snap shots. You're going to pull the camera out, it's going to be set to automatic and you're going to take a shot. It does have a portrait mode but I figured that I would just take it in the automatic mode because that's how most of you are going to take your photographs with the Samsung Stratosphere. Then I took the Stratosphere outside and shot a little video with it. Now this is 480p video but let's go ahead and take a look at that. This is a video test for the Samsung Stratosphere, that's the Wirefly building here on our campus in Northern Virginia. And it's a hazy sunshine sort of fall day, a very nice day actually. Now the Super AMOLED display on the Stratosphere is cranked up some. I can see it pretty easily in the hazy sunshine. And I'm curious to see how the video looks and how the sound sounds. 
Of course, this is shooting in 480p, which is not HD, it's not 720p HD. 480p could probably best be called DVD quality video. Okay, let's go take this inside and see how it looks. As you can see, the video was nothing special. You can get that with pretty much any, uh, you know, uh, compact camera these days. But the audio was actually surprisingly good. So I thought that the Stratosphere did a pretty nice job of recording the audio. It was pretty easy for me to see the display outside. A little bit washed out in the hazy sun, but not too bad. Okay, uh, many of you know that I like to run standard benchmark tests. So I've got both Quadrant and SmartBench in this phone. Let's go ahead and take a look at Quadrant right now and run the benchmark test. Now I'm going to come back to the phone when Quadrant is ready to wrap up and we'll get the score. Okay, this is the last visual test as part of Quadrant. I do want to go ahead and get the scores. And there you go. The Stratosphere got a Quadrant score of 1,420. That's 1,420. Now come back down here. This is where the typical Samsung Galaxy S phones had measured out, uh, typically around uh, oh, 800, 850. In my experience, they did a little better than that, around 900, 925. This, although it's a Galaxy S, got 1420. That is a very fine score for a Galaxy S phone. Now, the Galaxy S2 phones do significantly better than that. But, but this represents an uh, increase in performance that somehow Samsung has managed to shoehorn into the stratosphere. For instance, that's a better Quadrant score than I got with the Samsung Epic 4G. So I don't know if that's related to the fact that this is Android 2.3.5 or whether they did some uh, improvements to the 1 gigahertz uh, processor inside this phone. I just don't know. Okay, let's go back uh, now and give SmartBench 2011 a try. SmartBench 2011 runs a little quirky on this phone, so I'm going to have to give it a little time before it actually lets me run the test, and then it's going to take a while before I can actually get the results of the test. It's going to now let me run SmartBench. Here we go. And again, just like I did with Quadrant, I'm going to turn the camera off, and we'll pick it up when it's about ready to wrap up. This is the last of the visual tests for SmartBench, and now it's going to ask if I want the results. Now, again, it's kind of quirky, and we'll see if we get the results right away. It may take some time to get the SmartBench results, but uh, we will definitely get some results. And here are the results for SmartBench. Now, there are two scores that SmartBench does. One is called the Productivity Index, and the other is called the Games Index. The uh, Stratosphere here got 856, that's 856 for productivity, but take a look at the games index, that's 2385, 2385, and if you look at some of the other devices on this, you can see that the uh, Stratosphere is right in there as far as the games index is concerned. It's a, a very powerful visually processing phone. So that's what the scores are for Quadrant and SmartBench 2011. So what do I think about the Stratosphere? I like it. I like the Galaxy S phones and in particular the keyboard on the Epic 4G and here on the Stratosphere is one of the nicest keyboards of any phone. If you like to respond to emails and to send texts, this is the keyboard that you want. I just love the fact that you can have access to the numbers without having, having to hit a function key. Now you have to do the function key to get its symbols like the at sign and the dollar sign and so forth. So that's kind of a pain. I sort of wish they put those somewhere else. But nonetheless, I really enjoy the fact that this has a dedicated row of numbers as well as the Android menu keys going around the phone. So I like the Samsung Stratosphere and I hope that Verizon does very well with it. Of course, it should get some pretty awesome speeds with Verizon's LTE network. So, uh, now don't forget, by the way, that if you are in the market for a new phone, Wirefly is the Internet's largest retailer of cell phones, and we would like to be your cell phone vendor. So think of Wirefly when it comes time to buying a new phone. And hey, everybody, this is Bob Kovacs here at Wirefly. Thanks for watching.